Okay, so here's the miniature spot monitor setup for the, uh, the uh, security system that uh, we set up here. Now, what I did was I picked up one of these little cheapo uh, $20, $30 monitors. It's a very simple monitor. You get them from China. Decent quality. You can uh, cycle through some options here. Adjust the brightness, contrast, color, English mode. And some of them you can flip how the uh, how the video is shown. This one, I don't think you can do it. No, this one doesn't do it. The other little one I have does do it, so that is something to pay attention to. It comes with a little sticky mount and uh, connections. Very simple, you have two video inputs and a 12 volt power input. Now, the reason I got this is so that it can sit right up here on my desk or, uh, you know, on a night table or something like that. And uh, I don't need a big clunky monitor on the wall. It's big enough that you can see enough detail of what's going on. And I have the, uh, the KBD 300A over there. So that's just one way of doing it. These are quite nice. I like to have them on the side of the desk or on your nightstand so you can uh, quickly look over and see what is going on. Here's the KBD 308. Um, pretty sure you all know what these look like. This is going into one of the COM ports of the CM6800 matrix. And we're using monitor 3 because I have one more KBD 308 downstairs. And the KB D960, which is also plugged into the matrix. That's the main uh, main keyboard downstairs that uh, that controls it from the desk. This over here is where I brought the connections in. Basically, I just ran a very large uh, RJ45 Cat5 cable to the COM port of the matrix. There's only two of them. That uh, will that are programmed to directly connect a KBD 300A. So this uh, Cat5 patch cord just goes right up to the keyboard, and then right into the COM port of the matrix switcher. And you can do two of them like that. I believe it's ports five and six or something like that. I'll have to check. Uh, but that's how you do it. Now they recommend that uh, the, the cable run be no longer than 25 feet for voltage drop and whatnot. But, uh, this goes from the roof up here all the way down the wall to the basement it, and plus there's some extra cable coiled back up here uh, so it's way over 25 feet and it does still seem to work very fine so I haven't had any problems yet uh, but basically for this sort of thing you would put a little wall block over here which basically splices in a, uh, a 12 volt power adapter you see adapter and the other video I made uh, on that shows how you can do that. Right above it, just the BNC jack for the monitor. I will be putting an angled connector on this so that it doesn't stick out so much, but uh, that's how it goes. I'm trying to film this somewhat still, without freehanding the camera too much, but I'll pick up the camera here and show you how it's uh, set up. I have the keyboard here, and I have the little monitor here. So what I may do is just put this monitor next to the nightstand over here. And then I'll just put a simple little splitter over there. And uh, I'll mount a, a larger monitor right over here for, uh, for use on the desk or back there. Um, and to clean up this wiring, I will tuck it behind there and just put a little on-off switch so that it's uh, not blinding my eyes all the time. This here is the web client. So you can see that there's the cameras here doing their little rotation. These two are the PTZs. And that's generally it. The, uh, the major, I'll actually bring the monitor right next to the keyboard so you can see what's going on. Now we can cycle through the cameras over here. We'll go next. There's backyard. And we'll go to the spectra that's in color. Uh, it doesn't really show up good through the video, but it's decent on the monitor. 
And that is how that works. For those of you that were curious, you have any questions? Let me know.